The Grape Escape, a deep dive into California's 5.9 million ton grape harvest. Imagine this, it's a hot summer day in California's San Joaquin Valley, and you're standing in the midst of acres upon acres of lush grapevines. You can almost hear the sweet, tangy grapes whispering to you, pick me, pick me. But here's the twist. Those grapes are being grown by an army of workers, overseen by the tireless, sun-drenched, and ever-determined farmers of California. Yes, the state that produces nearly 95% of the entire U.S. Grape supply. Now, before you rush off to start your own vineyard, let's take a closer look at how California's massive grape industry works. From the vines that stretch like eager arms to the soil, to the sweat and labor that goes into creating everything from juicy table grapes to the world-famous California wine. We're diving into the growing, harvesting, and, dare I say, the grape escape that leads to an astonishing 5.9 million tons of grapes annually. Buckle up, because this will be a juicy ride, pun intended. The Vine Whisperers, setting the stage, in the grand and glorious world of California viticulture, that's fancy talk for grape growing. Everything begins in the ground. Where else would it? The story of each vine starts with an automatic watering system, which is pretty much the unsung hero of the farm. It's like a giant sip of water from your favorite refreshing beverage after a long day. But for plants, workers stake these irrigation systems into the earth like knights preparing for battle. It's essential for surviving California's sun-soaked summers, where grapes practically burn up if they don't get enough water. Once the irrigation is set, they dig little homes, holes if you will, for the grape vines, which are transplanted from a cozy nursery to start their new lives. Each acre gets around 900 vines, neatly spaced about seven feet apart. Why seven feet? Well, that's the magic distance for grapevines to stretch their roots and grow tall without bumping elbows. You wouldn't want your neighbors knocking over your fruit stand, would you? Now, let's take a moment to appreciate the true hero of any vineyard, the pruner. Every year, the vines are trimmed and shaped like the most beautiful bonsai trees you've ever seen. Farmers remove the old branches, making room for fresh growth come spring. Think of it as a yearly haircut for the vine. It's a tough job because no one likes seeing their vines get cut back, but it's necessary. Without this yearly pruning, the vines would just grow into a tangled mess, like your hair after you've worn a hat for too long. The long wait, years of growth. Here's where the patience comes in. Much like your New Year's resolutions, grape vines are ambitious, but take a few years to get going. Most varieties of grapes grown in California need at least three years before they're ready to bear fruit. Can you imagine waiting that long for a snack? It's like planting a tree and hoping that one day it will give you delicious snacks instead of just the shade. But don't worry, while the grapes are biding their time, they aren't idle. During their early years, the vines are trained to grow vertically by fixing them to poles. Think of it as teaching your vines how to stand up straight, because gravity is just too strong a force for them to fight on their own. And we all know that posture is key, whether you're a grapevine or a person. By the time these vines are three years old, they're ready to show off their first batch of grapes. And trust me, they do not disappoint. Springtime in the vineyards, a new season of growth. Come spring, the vines start to stretch their leafy arms to the sky, preparing to produce new shoots. This is when the pruning becomes a delicate art form. Any old or damaged shoots are clipped away, focusing all the nutrients on the new, healthier branches. If this were a movie, the vines would be the main characters, and the farmer would be the nurturing but tough director telling them, get it together or you're out in May. The fruits of the farmer's labor begin to show up as the grapes start to bear fruit. That's when the vineyard workers get their hands dirty, protecting the little green orbs from the predators of the grape world. 
aphids, and pests. This is serious business because no one wants to see their beloved grapes fall victim to a tiny aphid army. Enter insecticides, the chemical nights that keep the vineyard safe. It's all part of the process of ensuring that when harvest time comes, those grapes will be the plump, juicy marvels we know and love. The harvest, the real grape drama. Ah, harvest season, the time when all the hard work, sweat, and tears, probably just the sweat, but who knows, finally pays off. Workers flood the vineyards, cutting each grape by hand like a surgical operation. Precision is key here. After all, these grapes are the stuff of legend. Table grapes, the kind you can pop into your mouth like they're candy, are treated with great care. Any unsatisfactory fruit, tossed. They're too sensitive for the tough world of mass production. I mean, if you're going to eat a grape, it should be perfect, right? During the harvest, approximately 95,000 workers descend upon California's vineyards. These workers make about $18 an hour, which might sound modest until you realize they're part of a 5.9 million ton empire of grapes. If you're doing the math, that's serious business and not just in terms of manpower, but also cash flow. In 2021 alone, California's grape harvest was valued at a staggering $5.2 billion. Yep, billion with a B. The Grape Lab, quality control. But the harvest is just the beginning. After the grapes are plucked, they still have to undergo a process that would make even the most seasoned food critic sweat. Quality control. The grapes are tested again before being sent off to packing and shipping. So before you enjoy that sweet, vine-ripened fruit in your salad or as a juicy snack, remember that somewhere, someone is holding a tiny microscope up to those grapes, asking, is this grape worthy? It's the high-stakes world of table grape production, where only the best of the best make it to your grocery store aisle. Wine grapes, not your average grapes, now, we know that California is famous for its table grapes, but we can't forget about the wine grapes, the sultry, sophisticated cousins of the table grapes. These grapes aren't handled with quite the same care. Why? Because they're destined for the wine press, where they'll be turned into delicious, fermented beverages. Wine grapes don't get the red carpet treatment like their table counterparts. Instead, they're more like the rock stars of the grape world. Less finesse, more. Let's get this party started. The wine industry alone has its own set of rules, but it's safe to say that California's grape growers are just as passionate about their wine grapes as they are about table grapes. After all, a single glass of wine can trace its roots back to the hard work of thousands of laborers and years of growth. And that's something to sip to. Conclusion. A toast to California's grape growers. As we wrap up our journey through the vineyards of California, let's raise a glass of wine. Of course, to the hardworking farmers and dedicated workers who turn the humble grape into a product worth billions. From the intricate planting process to the meticulous pruning and careful harvesting, California's grape industry is a marvel of efficiency, dedication, and perhaps a little bit of magic. Whether it's your snack of the day or the wine you sip on during dinner, next time you pop a grape into your mouth or uncork a bottle, you'll know the story of the labor, love, and sweat that went into bringing it to you. So here's to California, the land of sunshine, soil, and grapes, and the farmers who make sure those grapes make it from the vine to your table. Because in the end, grapes are not just a fruit, they're a symbol of perseverance, creativity, and an incredibly juicy business.